Welcome to Let's Talk Geek 91, recorded 2nd of May 2012. In the show, we talk to James from My Gaming. We cover Diablo 3, God of War, Ascension, Black Ops 2, Sleeping Dogs, which apparently is very cool. Uh, we also then talk about the pad phone and Charlene, the gun toting quadrocopter. What more do I need to say? Watch the show. Welcome to Let's Talk Geek, episode 91. Uh, in the show tonight, we have James. This. And Gerrit. Hi. And I'm back, Jan. <laughs> and myself, Tim Hawk. Um, and welcome to our listeners. Uh, getting directly into our events. Um, Quite a few events. Yeah, lots. Um, hmm. lots. A lot of them gaming events. James, you want to actually intro these? Yeah, sure. Um, basically, uh, there's a couple of uh, Diablo 3 events coming up uh, with the launch on the 18th, I th- uh, 15th, I think. Um, all in Cape Town. So all in Cape Town? None up yet. N- there are some. Uh, I know Zaps, uh, the retail outlet in yep. Randburg, is going to be hosting one. And I'm still trying to find out for some other guys if they're having some Diablo 3 launch events up here in Joburg. The Cape Town guys have been on the ball. Uh, Kalahari is hosting a party if you have uh, pre-ordered your game from Kalahari cool. you can just uh, send them your code and they'll you know get you on the list you have to do that by the 4th of May I think um, MWeb is also having one you have to enter by the 10th of May and they're going to pick 30 people to invite to their M cave where they have all sorts of uh, you know high caffeine sugary drinks and free junk food Keep you going. and they will have some PC set up uh, for some Diablo 3 LANing uh, some intro landing that you know landing landing yes. on the internet in the same room that sort of landing not Wednesday actually landing slash yeah. land slash one internet. of those yeah uh, isn't BT Games doing the normal but not yeah I, probably uh, I need to get some details on what they're doing where they're doing it from them cool. so uh, I've been in contact with them but um, they'll usually do it at some of their flagship stores so we yeah. just need to find out which ones but um, if you're in Joburg you can probably expect a, uh, a BT Games launch somewhere yeah I'm sure for so a big title like Pretoria that Centurion. Pretoria should have one now Centurion uh, Normally, have, get something. last year we were at the Menon one mm. for StarCraft. StarCraft, yeah. Mm-hmm. Two. Okay, and um, for just general gaming stuff, Two Up Gamers Cape Town is having their fifth gathering uh, for the year. Oh, uh, cool. And that's just some general, you know, get together with all the other guys in Cape Town and talk about games and play some games and have fun. Okay. All right. Did you cover? I just know we had lots there. Yep, that was the three that I have lined up. So, unless cool. you have something. Uh, no, normally, we always mention <laughs> Diablo 3 is being released <laughs> uh, yes. on the 15th. Um, other than that, not, not, no other major news. Um, events. We will we'll go directly to our topics. Yeah. Uh, God of War Extension Multiplayer Reveal. Yeah, God of War, uh, new game coming out. Um, you know, cool. everyone. Uh, thought God of War 4, yes please, it turns out to be a prequel game now, so we're going to find out about Kratos when he was still a Spartan warrior. This would be before uh, the events of God of War 1 and 2 where uh, he got tricked into murdering his family by Ares, the first God of War that he later killed. Um, So we don't know much about the single player storyline at this point, you know, how it's all going to work. You know, Kratos had these amazing abilities as a demigod, so now he's kind of going to be a human again. So, you know, is he still going to be as cool as he was in the God of War games? How's that going to work? But what they have revealed is they've uh, got a multiplayer component, which is looking kind of fun. We've got a video there in the show notes if you guys want to check it out. And um, it's going to, from what we've seen so far, they've only shown one map and um, it, let me just get the name here. It's called Domination. Yeah. And it's going to be an eight player uh, battle for a side. And everyone will have sort of Kratos esque uh, heroes with various cool weapons that they can use to fight one another. And there'll be a. In the map they showed us, for example, there's a Cyclops chained to the battle arena. And each team is fighting to free the Cyclops and therefore win the battle. And uh, it culminates in a very gory, cinematic uh, slaying of the Cyclops that everyone contributes to. But it, it looks oh, like okay. a lot of fun. Very yeah. cool. As long as they don't do what they seem to do with a lot of the alto- other multiplayers, is suddenly they make them a shooter. No, absolutely not. Yeah, I, I, I know. Yes, with that, I, but, yeah. I don't think so. But, but I, I've just seen so often they go that route and then all of a sudden you, you're playing a shooter game. And it's mm-hmm. like... Yeah, and this bouncing from chest high wall to chest mm. high wall. No, definitely not. It's um, it looks like multiplayer is a, a core element of this game that they you know they want to show it off first. They haven't oh, really told cool. us much yeah. about single player. Single player is undoubtedly going to be cool because we have faith in Sony Santa Monica. They've delivered some good games so far, so uh, it's not just a tacked on multiplayer. Yeah, by the looks. Of look, I know I'm a big fan of the God of War trilogy. Yeah, um, and I'm really looking yeah. forward to this. It's going to be a good one. All right, Herit. Into the pad phone. Yes. The yeah. Phone we've we've wanting. well the, the pad phone and uh, actually more importantly the transformer pad TF three hundred, uh, which is 
kind of like a, a little bit of a downgrade to the Transformer Prime. Yeah. But really, it the, the reviews don't look like that. It looks like it's actually a really, really good tablet. Uh, so we have some announcement for South Africa. It looks Do like... Do you want to just go over quickly what it is? Uh, yes. Transformer Pad is uh, a tablet. So similar to the Transformer that I am actually have in yep, front of me yep. here. And then uh, the successor to that, the Transformer Prime tablet that docks into a keyboard so it becomes kind of a netbook. Um, they've been fairly successful. They come in fairly cheap too. Uh, in the in the US, the Transformer Pad, the, the 300, now, uh, I think is at about $400. Now the Transformer is, Pad, because you, you get the Pad phone. Yes. Well, we'll get to that now. Start, okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah, cool. So the, the Pad we actually have some news for. Uh, they're looking at May 2012 for South Africa. Cool. So hooray for that. And then we have some news or rather lack of news for the pad phone. Now, the pad phone uh, gets me going as well because yes. it's a phone that slots into a screen and becomes a tablet. The, tab the, the, the tablet is a, a dumb device. It's really just a big battery with a bigger screen, yeah. a yeah. high-resolution screen. Mm. So the phone, uh, all the processing is done in the phone. All the, you know, all the storage is also in the phone. So no, you have one uh, device. Any technical specs of that phone? Uh, yes. It's uh, an S4 Qualcomm, which... Yeah, we're kind of a little bit sketchy on. We've been sketchy with Qualcomm and especially the Adreno GPUs. It's an Adreno 225, so we'll see how that fares. Um, Does the screen, uh, the, the tablet screen, have additional battery in it? I yes, so. yes, it does. exactly. That's the point. And you can yeah. also slot it into the And then keyboard. you can slot it into a keyboard. With additional battery in the keyboard. With ex yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it has battery with battery with more battery. It's, it's awesome. It's battery set. So at the end of the day, you have enough battery life to get you from here to the U.S., and for, cool. for like a full flight, pretty which cool. is pretty cool. Unfortunately, we don't really have news for when it will be available in South Africa, which is very sad. This for is me. one of the phones I'm waiting to decide if I, if it, I want to. Exactly. Not. It's the one that's keeping me from buying a Galaxy Nexus just like right now. Yes, same. And, you know, this, this, they say they're testing it or the operators are testing it, but everyone's being very quiet about it. Which is worrying. Yeah, not a good thing. Um, one thing also just mentioned, also the keyboard also adds USB and SD card. Yes, addition. yes, yes. Which I must say is one of the disappointing I'm seeing with most of the phones is you can't add more storage in it at the moment. It seems to be uh, a trend um, depending on which manufacturer. With the Nexus ones, yes, and they had a reason for that. And if you want, I can link you to the Reddit thread where there, were, uh, what they, there was a Googler, Dan Morrill, um, who actually explained why. And it has to do with sort of a, a UI thing and it has some system implications as well it's just that if you start adding additional storage it becomes really complicated where do you store things well, where do you store applications where do you store you know other things how do you set the defaults it becomes a, a nightmare I, I don't mind them. my problem with that though is that they're now you know I have 60 I, I want 32, 32 gigs and 64 gigs yeah so my Nexus one with 32 gigs doesn't exist yeah so they've limited me that I can't expand it. Yes. And then given me very little. Yes. For me, being a power user, so I a, a thirty-two lights. gig device would be preferable. Agree. Yeah. Um, and after At using, least. you know, just I think of all the stuff that I use. I have a sixteen gig in my old phone, mm. and I pretty much fill it. Um, so just so I, yeah, I, 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 I filled up this, yeah. this guy as well, the transformer, which has sixteen gigs, and that's just with some photos that we took over the weekend. Mm. Raw is big, um, and, and that's just my thing: is that they they limiting you, but then they don't do what like Apple does is give you some high end ones with more storage. Yes, um, yeah, but why is there a massive leap in the additional storage, or that they just see you coming from a mile away? I mean, why is there such a big price difference between a sixteen gig and a thirty two gig phone? No, Flash is expensive. Are, what, what we're saying here is <laughs> there, there are no thirty two gig phones for Android. Yeah, for Android. You don't find a lot of them. Every, you know, there's supposed to be a Galaxy Nexus 32 gig. The, the, I, no, I'm actually not sure they, if it exists. No, no, they cancelled it. I don't think they, they so. They said they were doing it and they didn't yeah. do it. Okay, good point. Okay, good point. So, yeah. Um, but, yes, but that's where you used a thousand rand more for 32 gigs. Cloud storage. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. But in this country, it's not a viable option. Yeah, it's not really. It doesn't work. Yeah. Um, so, anyway, so that's just my thing. Um, so yes, pad phone, kind of a sad story. Maybe this is the push that I need to just buy me a Galaxy Nexus now and get it over and done with. And you can get, you, you tell me how you can actually get it from overseas. Yeah, uh, Google, but we, we don't have this in the show notes. Maybe we should add it. Google is selling it uh, via the Play Store now. Um, mm. It's only in the US, <coughs> technically available in the US, but of course there are ways to get around oh, that sort of what thing. What are they selling in the Play Store? The Galaxy Nexus. For is that now the first hardware device? Uh, in the Play Store, yes. It's the first and only hardware device. So they, uh, it looks like they're reintroducing them selling hardware, like they did with the Nexus One, yeah, which yeah. failed horribly. Um, and now they're doing 
the Galaxy Nexus, which, you know, maybe there are rumors, does this mean that they're going to have the Nexus tablet there as well? Well, well following this, I think they're following the model that Apple does because you, there you can buy your iPhones and stuff like that. Admittedly, you get linked immediately into your contract. Yeah. Um, but In this case, you're buying it uh, for $400 uh, with then, of course, you still have to add your sales tax, uh, which I didn't take into account. Bad me. Um, no contract, no lock, no nothing. It's, um, you can do what you like. But effectively, you for under and that's 4, for the GSM range, version you're getting for a new phone. Yes, um, which is cool, very cool. Mm. So, so maybe this is the push that I need. Cool. Moving um, along. Also, you said that uh, there's a shortage of the. It looks like there's a shortage of the Qualcomm Snapdragon system on chip, the S4, which is used in the pad phone and a whole bunch of others, uh, a whole bunch of other devices. Um, what's causing this is anyone's guess. Uh, maybe the demand is just so high that they can't supply enough of it because it does look to be a really good system on chip uh, yeah, no, from, no. from Qualcomm. Uh, th- that's a good problem to have. Yeah, it's, <laughs> well, it's a good and a bad problem because now you sit with the pad phone, you have a shortage, so now, now you have some delays because of that shortage because uh, they're not uh, using anything else. And this is a weird Apple SQ thing happening here where there's shortage and... Shortage to push my, demand it, up so yes. that people will buy more or something. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe like that. Uh, I hate when people do that. Yes. So an artificial limitation. And it works, though. That's the problem. Up in the air. Talking about Google, since we're there, you also said Google patent points to, uh, that that said there's some patents that have come out recently Mm. uh, from Google, and it looks like possibly a new Nexus slider phone. Well, um, I think the patent has to do specifically with a keyboard. So with a hardware keyboard for a phone. And the reason this is... wait. I mean, Nokia, it's it's not a yes. Nokia no, no, has it's, done it for years. It's not a new thing, I know, um, but it's a new patent which has it. It has to do with being able to put bigger buttons on there. Uh, I haven't read through the whole Plus thing. Plus mouse. Plus, yeah, more <coughs> more space. So they've done some weird and wonderful yeah, things to Nokia's get more there. space on there. Well, wasn't it no, ninety one hundred that had it? Okay, off, okay. I'm just, I'm just surprised thing. there's a patent for bigger buttons. I mean, it's, it's like like bigger buttons. Yeah. Uh, like I say, I haven't read through it just yet. <laughs> it's just okay. it looks like the patent that but they have. Who there. the hell's going back to a flipping keyboard? And what's interesting, there well, is I'm, demand for that. Yeah, I would I actually, I'd love a decent hardware one. keyboard. But unfortunately, but the decent hardware anymore. keyboards are in the HTC Desire you Z. Mean, you mean like that was the last decent one I used. Yeah, and your point being, <laughs> sorry, uh, um, you just, your, uh, your old, your old uh, and, um, Nokia's on phones. Yeah, because you don't use them anymore. Look, look <laughs> I, I, I've upgraded to Android because it's, it's a much better phone, mm. and I love the touchscreen. I miss the key. I used to have one of the old Windows phones, which that operating system sucked. Mm. Yes. It was so bad, but I loved the keyboard on it. Mm. Um, especially when you want to answer emails and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. so for 90% of the things that you use the touchscreen, yeah. Every now and again, you wanted to just go into that mode. Th- think like when I was stuck at the beer festival, it sounds bad. We had to quickly remote shell into a server because something had Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I wanted to go out and start that. using the keyboard. Because Much quicker I'm, just to go get your bag. If you really want a keyboard, invest in something like that. You mean my, my, my bag with my, my laptop that was back in Johannesburg? No, I mean something like that you can keep on you the whole time. I won't. Okay, well. You, slide into you your carry your phone with you the whole time. And, yeah. yeah, okay, the reason this is such a big deal is it's it's pu- a it was pushed through really quickly through the yeah. patent office, which has a, a record of about 18 months. This was filed in January, so that's a really quick turnaround time. And it has Andy Rubin's name on it. What, what I find more interesting with this, though, is this, this is done by Google. Yes, this is now a um, Google patent. You don't really make – yes, they have Motorola, but they don't really make phones. They don't make phones, but what they do with the Nexus line is they partner with hardware um, manufacturers, so it's possible they patent this and then they license it to someone else to help them make Nexus phones. Yeah, or maybe they use it with Motorola, uh, which I, I still think phone. is. You <laughs> know, I, think I, I, I don't think that they're going to do that. That would just be shooting themselves in the foot um, if if they start using Motorola to make their own devices. Yeah, I agree. Or I just, just I, I understand. I've always I've loved that Nokia 9300 was a wonderful phone. The Desire Z, brilliant keyboard on it. Desire Z, yes. Had an amazing keyboard it on it. Still has. Really, I, I it know did, somebody that runs But it. unfortunately, it's a Desire Z. But when you get to that form factor, key, physical keyboard just doesn't work. I'm sorry. No, but, but it's f- rip about a real keyboard then. I mean, I love the BlackBerry keyboard. I exactly. can whip out fantastic emails on that very quickly. And uh, it's one of the things keeping me tied to BlackBerry is that it has a great hardware keyboard. Well, then my hands Look, are just too big. Every, every Maybe that says problem, that yeah. keyboards in this form factor doesn't work. But I haven't had seen one person release a top-of-the-end phone with a keyboard to prove it doesn't work. 
Okay, fair. Um, like we all I would in. like to go back to, yes, just the nine digits. The, the nine digits. Oh, oh, no. I was pretty good no. at typing on that too. Exactly. No. Because that you could do without looking down. Yeah. While you're, you actually, while you're driving. Yes, because so. you know which bus While, while you're yeah. driving. Okay, yeah. we did not just endorse <laughs> SMSing oh, yeah, while don't. driving. Don't, 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 don't do that, please. I was sitting in the passenger seat. But you don't have to look down. You yeah, know yeah. exactly where. So I'll go back. I'll, I'll yeah, accept school like underneath that. the like table. like touch typing. There we go. Yes, yeah. that you can do. But to go back to <laughs> keyboard on it. No, I'm going to disagree. A- anyway, before we talk too much about that. Okay, right. Keyboards. <laughs> back into games. What's Sleeping up? Dogs Preview. Sleeping, yes. Sleeping Dogs is a new game uh, from uh, Square Enix. Uh, not really a new game. Sorry, from who? Square Enix. Square, Square Enix? Square yeah. Enix. I think. Square, Square Enix. Enix. Square Enix is known for publishing a lot of games, uh, okay. mo- notably Final Fantasy amongst others. Okay. Um, okay. It, this game started out as True Crime Hong Kong, uh, part of the True Crime franchise under Activision. Um, it actually was never a, a proper True Crime game, um, mm. but Activision was... Developing, they had a studio developing this new game and they decided we're going to call it True Crime because people know the brand. Anyway, two years later, they thought actually this game's not going to sell very well, so um, they canned the project. Uh, luckily, Square Enix bought up the license for all the development that had been done, but not the name True Crime Hong yeah. Kong or whatever. So they renamed it Sleeping Dogs. So now what we have is a open world uh, action adventure game in the vein of uh, Grand Theft Auto. A uh, very story-driven narrative, single-player experience, third-person shooting mechanics, uh, and it looks to be a lot of fun because what they have added is um, free flow, free flow combat mechanics, oh, cool. uh, mm-hmm. much like you get in Batman and uh, Assassin's Persia. Creed. Yeah, that sort of stuff. So you know, n- nice simple controls, which I really liked. I got a hands-on preview of this game, and um, it, it was very easy to combo together slick-looking moves. And maybe I should actually slow down a bit. Uh, the, the setting is Hong Kong. And you are a undercover police officer infiltrating the triads. Current, future, boss. Uh, current sort current, of. Uh, yeah. So it's a very much like a, in the vein of every kung fu movie you've ever seen. Um, you know, you're an undercover police officer infiltrating the triads. So it's based on very visceral, gory kung fu stuff. You know, mm-hmm. and, oh triads and all that, all, all that sort of good stuff. So uh, lots of kung swords. fu fighting. Yeah, there will be swords. I mean, we didn't get to see any, but you know, there's going to be melee weapons and all sorts of stuff. What they have is contextual. Uh, environmental attacks so you'll be fighting a bunch of guys on the roof and then you grab one and there's a industrial strength air conditioner on the roof and you ram his head through the air conditioner or you throw him through a skylight or you can do the classic and toss him off the edge of the building and there's a number of cool things I mean there'll be you know hot plates that are Chinese restaurant and guys yeah. are always fighting in restaurants burn his face on, on the uh, reminds me of all those the hot plates yes, yes, exactly. reminds so, me of all those Jackie Chan movies like, and, and it's very smooth. Uh, what I really liked about it was, you know, how, how easy it was to pick up and play. And um, having played a bit of Batman, what did you play on it? Uh, I played on the Xbox 360, but they okay. had PS3 there, and it will be released on PC, PC. as well, okay. which is cool. cool. Um, so that is just one component: the free flow combat. Obviously, very story driven, as I said. So there's a nice story to keep you engaged. All the side missions that you'd expect in a third world uh, adventure, uh, third person open world adventure like this. Uh, lots of driving stuff as well. They had input from. Uh, Need for Speed developers who are now on the team, mm-hmm. uh, ex Black Box developers. So they've you know lent their expertise to the driving mechanic, and it seemed pretty solid. We didn't get too much time with the driving. Uh, yeah, so it looks like a lot of fun. Um, I'm just seeing here if I had any more notes I wanted to get through. Uh, that's about it. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds pretty cool. It, it looks very cool. I was very impressed, and I'm excited for this one. When are they planning to release it? Uh, they're aiming for August. I think the 18th of August. So you played a very yeah uh, alpha code. I mean, it seems solid. There was good detail in the environment. Nice and colorful. Hong Kong looked amazing. Um, okay. I must say that you know they paid attention. So to it's detail, basically so. get to a point of your development, test the market. If the guys aren't going to not enjoying the game, can it? <laughs> look like also buy it up, I, yeah. I, I'm thinking more is, is you can fine tune it a bit more depending mm-hmm. on how mm-hmm. the guys mm-hmm. are re- responding to it. Um, oh, oh, slightly uh, gaming thing uh, <laughs> into sports. Uh, Darren Scott. Sports. How did you get to sports? Darren Scott. Oh. <laughs> on the other hand, Darren. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Donkey Nas. Nice. I was waiting for that. <laughs> uh, sorry. Yeah, person, okay, sorry. So. Okay, keep going. Uh, Darren Scott's got a this new online radio station in South Africa uh, done by Darren Scott called Balls, um, and it's a, it's a sport online sports radio station. Must resist. But I mean, just, let's yes. just look at this <laughs> from a from a from a geeky type of view. How many online radio stations have have we got? Not radio stations that are also broadcasting online. Two, two. as in solely solely radio online. Sorry? Two oceans. Two oceans. 
because I know Bork Radio in, in Cape Town, they actually and started m- online and they've now got their license and they're going out to Out of issue. curiosity, who does Interwebs Radio? <clears throat> Look, I could be wrong here. There's two that I'm aware, aware of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Griffin. Yeah, does, doesn't that but count? He, but he doesn't. He only plays music, so yeah. does he count? Sure. He only plays no. music. Eh? Do they have to do the, the babble thing? <laughs> yes. Do they have to waffle? For me to, if you just play music, then, then give me a playlist. You know, I can play you off Spotify or anything else. Yeah. So what are you doing any different to that? Playing good music. So every night, give me a playlist. Playing good South African music. Yeah. yeah. Once again, give me a playlist. Okay, but all right, so we got uh, two. So, uh, that's why I, I, I require there must be some interaction. So it, you can be playing music and then talking and explaining why you're playing it, mm. but there has to be some voice interaction for me to qualify. Okay, as a, so a interwebs pop, radio doesn't count. Radio station. Yeah. Okay, so there's two. You said one is two uh, oceans. One's two oceans, two oceans. Uh, and then we now have balls. Anybody else? It could, it could be anybody else that I'm, I'm not aware of. Uh, look, well, I'm, I'm look, not including on a podcast here. I'm I wonder if, about 24, uh, as far mm. as 24-7. Mm. Now, I wonder if the same laws would apply regarding the Broadcast commu- Complaints Commission. If you do decide to say whatever the hell you want to, <laughs> yes. would they still be able to take you off air? Yes. More, most certainly, yeah. Why? Well, because you're not allowed to say naughty There's things no, on the um, radio. Yeah, but now it's on the internet. Well, you're not allowed to do certain naughty things on the internet, but people do. But well, You just put a warning well, in front of it. We could... Uh, you know, well, put it to the, the same test. way that video is. Even if you if you do a like online show, yeah, but you but we 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 uh, we agree to um, to fall in YouTube's rules. If we wanted to do the how whatever we want, I mean, get the mixer to jump around all naked in the, in front the of the camera. South African broadcasting thing technically still applies to us. Um, we're not a broadcaster. Doesn't apply. We're not a broadcaster. You see, interesting question. But good luck to Darren. Let's see what happens. Mm-hmm. I hope this is a great success. No, no, I hope these things more. And this is a good way to just tell the rest of them, go away. <laughs> 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 this is what I'm going to do. Uh, Brilliant. So unfortunately, I haven't really listened to them. I'm not really into my sports. Should be, but... Yeah, no, it's something it's we'll not, try it's it at the office. enough hours nah. in the day. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try it at the office. Technology is my sport. Yeah, we can, we can do that. If the internet's working. From that, <laughs> back, back into games. Cool. Sorry, we were having a very heavy game. Since we were changed from my gaming. Just tell we'll me. do the proper whole intro at the end. Yeah, sure. Find you. <laughs> but uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 2. First question. Yes. Very, very. Steam. Uh, no. Mm, well, maybe. It might be released on Steam. Those sort of details haven't come out yet. We don't know what the DRM or any of that is. Oh, but, please uh, don't go. But it's going to be Origin. Modern Warfare with Steam. No, it's not going to be Origin. Mm, okay. Oh, please not. Game, so. It's the only reason um, why I stopped playing Battlefield. I mean, that whole launching <laughs> interface is just so... <laughs> I don't have a problem with unusable. it. Unusable. Well, you want to use an unusable one if you try the Microsoft gaming one. Yeah, then that oh, is okay, the worst. True. Games Windows Live is the best. Games, which, which games oh yeah. no. Worse, no. there, there was... I mean, it um, really makes Origin... I, I actually make okay, decisions yeah. now on whether I will buy a game or not if it comes with Windows Games Windows Live. I will not buy that game anymore. I bought Bulletstorm. It was the most horrible experience I've had. But with coming back to Windows Call of Duty. Live. Anyway, coming back to Call of Duty Black <laughs> Ops 2. Sorry, yeah, sorry. Go, no, no, Honestly, go for it. What, what I've been running on off Steam, I got this. Uh, what's Microsoft? Age what's of Empires. Age of Empires. Mm-hmm. So I tried it. It's really free and fully a free. Yeah, no. So you it takes you like ten Windows minutes Live. to get bloody well into the game. Mm-hmm. It's 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 actually fairly boring. I found they've they've structured the the uh, the things you need to do. They didn't put a lot of thought into it. Um, so there's no flow. You sort of just it feels very repetitive. Okay. Very. Yeah. Uh, what's it? Plant world. On Facebook, oh, uh, oh farm. Farm, 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 you know, yeah, you're just we mining things. Well, I mean, yeah, the, the point is, um, there's microtransactions involved with that game, that's yeah. how they're making their money. So, I, I guess I, you pay to make it exciting almost because you can do stuff, so, um, sort of, but they, they could have pulled big time. A bit more. I, wouldn't yeah. have, no, I wouldn't mind paying, mm-hmm. um, because I really enjoyed the original mm-hmm. if they just got me a bit more in and showed me that you know they're putting a bit of effort into it. Yeah. but anyway, that's not actually what I wanted to talk <laughs> about. In this, I, I got this from Steam. Mm-hmm. So you go, cool, click Steam, goes in, goes in, and says, okay, please register for Microsoft. Oh, now you need to register for Microsoft Games. Now you need to add this into Microsoft Games. It's like, yeah, but I've added this from Steam. Mm. What, why are you now making me, force me to use this whole different platform? And, it takes and how did Steam allow this? And it took me like 10 minutes to figure out that I didn't have the latest silver lights in my Internet Explorer, and that's why the Microsoft Windows Live wouldn't launch, so I could log. Yeah, you know, it was just, no. What? Yeah. 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 That's an, you've got to have the right... Okay, I think they've not dropped silver lights. I'm talking about a couple of months ago. Yeah. But, yes, you go into the game interface, you see the live coming down at the top, but then nothing happens. 
So I'm like, the game's not starting. I'm like, what the hell? And yeah, eventually, the, I mean, old tab, you get this little pop up coming up saying, live, oh, yeah. no, you need to let's lay the silver light. I'm like, okay. Well, look, <laughs> the, the only reason, though, that I can think Steam allowed this that, you know, you click on this that actually takes you to another party that's actually f- pretty much just doing what Steam does is for Steam to show you how bad it could be. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, see, sorry, Steam I, said winning. You, I had okay. to complain no, about them. Of course. Uh, so I mean, we all like complaining about Games Windows Live and. Microsoft must know that we don't like it and they must fix it. So, mm. anyway, uh, yeah, Call of Duty Black Ops 2 has been officially revealed. I mean, it's one of the worst kept secrets for the <laughs> last few months. You know, there's been leaks and rumors and all sorts of stuff What's flying around. It's a release cycle now because they look. Oh, yeah, every year there'll be a, year. a Call of Duty game, guaranteed. And this one is launching. Okay. Uh, and let me get the and date they, for you here. Sometime in November, the usual sort of do launch. They still window. stick to oh, the whole. Okay, yeah, right. Um, one is by the one. one yes, is by this is Treyarch this time. Mm-hmm. Um, not everyone's favorite development studio, yeah, although I really haven't had a problem with. I didn't have a problem with um, Call of Duty Five. I thought it was okay. Yeah. I didn't play Black Ops. What, um, what, what Call of Duty Five needed was uh, golden footprints on the floor, so that you knew <laughs> just exactly where to go because they didn't railroad it enough. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> yes. Black Ops no, 2. So <laughs> Black Ops Ouch. 2, uh, whereas Black Ops 1 was set in the Vietnam War, Black Ops 2 has now been shifted into the future. It's now hitting 2025. Okay. And there's all sorts of futuristic <laughs> stuff happening. If you watch the little trailer that they released to announce the game, there's um, you know combat drones buzzing around and you know fancy Apache helicopters or whatever they may be in the future shooting things. There was even some horseback riding gunplay which was a bit out of place because of course you can't have a Call of Duty game without the Middle East being cast as the bad guy somehow um, all the old you know bad guys are back from Black Ops 1 they're sort of or at least one of them H- having said that I haven't played it I don't know the characters names but they did allude to it in the video there um, and it, it looks quite fun they have um, little mech warrior tank type things going on you know armored tanks almost something out of cool. Star Wars but a bit bastardized Very and uh, you know they, they walk along um, sort of big dog yeah, exactly. So it's looking entertaining. It's hardly a Call of Duty game anymore. I mean, it could you could put any other label on it, and it's here's your latest action shooter serving. They, they all sort um, of hit that way eventually. Yeah, I mean, they have to. Uh, Call of Duty is a strong brand, so you understand what Activision's doing there. It's a recognizable brand on the shelf. You might as well capitalize on that to rename it something else would just be foolish. So there's your, new, your next Call of Duty. Of course, the comments uh, on my gaming have been less than complimentary about this. <laughs> there's been a lot of copy-pasting going on and stuff like that, so... Uh, yeah, we're going to have to wait and see if Activision can impress once again. Uh, maybe they'll break all sales records again. Uh, can they keep doing that? Uh, at, at where's the watershed moment where they stop, you know, actually making money with, well, not ma- stop making money, but they, the franchise starts to enter decline. I don't know how impressed people are with Modern Warfare 3. I'm not much of a Call of Duty gamer myself. So uh, we'll wait and I see. I had to now. decide between Battlefield and Modern Warfare. I'm still disappointed because I went for Battlefield. <laughs> I think I would have enjoyed Modern Warfare. Perhaps. Yeah. It's a much more fast-paced sort of gameplay. Yeah. Uh, you hop no in, origin. F- hop in, no play origin. for 30 minutes, <laughs> log out, and you know, you've had fun. So uh, Nothing uh, wrong with it. Uh, of course, there's going to be the inevitable milking of DLC, so just be prepared to pay uh, $120 for a full this. game. Yeah. yeah, because it's like, here's a game. Oh, we're quite expensive. And it's like, okay, cool. But I'll well, get everything for that, don't sixty dollar game, and um, for Modern Warfare Three, for example, they finally got around to releasing some DLC for uh, the PC guys who've been neglected so far, and it's a fifteen dollar DLC with four new maps. Yeah. So you know, it's really was it worth this, this it? This is the kind of stuff I remember a day, a time in gaming when I could download maps from a community website and install them and play them for free. But it seems those times have gone. Gone. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Starcraft. Sure. I mean, uh, some uh, publishers or still embrace it, and they do well because of it. Mm-hmm. I mean, Blizzard mm-hmm. realizes how powerful the community was in keeping their gaming franchise alive. Warcraft 3, for example, I've played that for years and years and years, and they didn't milk me for money. So, you know, I'm still happy to buy Blizzard games at this point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Me too. Until well, they start well, well, getting cheeky. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. Well, they seem to be actually being quite, good, mm. quite good and quite clever, and they they keep people going in and, and mm. either fire like, okay, I know World of Warcraft, they, they pay for it, mm. but then they're continually adding more and putting a lot, yeah. of, a lot yeah. of dev and, and money into it. So from our go, that's actually well paid for for that. Um, anyway, just something from RC from CZC. He mentioned there's a mention of South Africa uh, in the oh, marketing yes. for Black Ops 2. Yeah, I actually don't know much about that because I, you know, was busy today, unfortunately, so I didn't actually check it out. Yeah. I tried to scan <laughs> and, uh, quickly and then yeah, I realized I just can't stopped talking about for that. Yeah. <laughs> Along with Fried Roadkill, I'm wondering, will this be uh, like Far Cry 2? 
because that was quite funny. You know, okay, what? The, the Afrikaans, the, the Afrikaans oh, yes, accents in yeah, Far Cry yeah, 2. Yeah, that was, that uh, was okay. really funny. Yeah. <laughs> was it funny? <laughs> yeah. So will it just be, you know, kind of like that, or will they actually have more of a South yeah, African Yeah, sorry, I, I didn't, I didn't follow that story today, you know, other things <laughs> on the plate. Yeah, now for something mm. completely different. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Zobot OS. Yeah. Which is somebody who's got imported uh, Android, Android yeah, to .NET. To .NET. Uh, now, there's already been... It's almost wait, say, wait, 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 There's sorry. already been a, a framework. I mean, there was Monotouch, which yeah. was for iOS. Mm-hmm. Um, but so that uh, C-sharp programmers could program in C-sharp uh, and make native applications for iOS. And then they made Mono for Android, um, which, same thing, just so that you can code in C-sharp for Android. And it still uses the native APIs and you end up with a native app. Mm. So now what they've actually done is they've ported the, the framework and the VM. So pretty the much VM. they removed Davlik and you're Dalvik, now using yeah. Dalvik, sorry, and you're now using a, a... And you're using s- some other version of Mono C Sharp, um, which has some really good sides by the sounds of it uh, because of just the, the, the way that C Sharp uh, and .NET is structured. You get a lot of uh, you know, optimizations that you can put in there, um, you know, not necessarily something that every programmer would like, but you get some really cool things so they can speed up parts. Uh, and this is really just a, a research project that they're busy with. And it looks, it actually looks pretty good. Look, what, and it's what, an interesting... What somebody says is quite interesting, this, this with Oracle and Google. Yeah, with Oracle and Google they, they taking... They always go, okay, we'll pay you this until we've bought it. I, I don't see that. I must be honest, I don't see that actually no, or, or they can, you know, pay whatever damages they need to pay and then... Switch over, switch the framework over to .NET, um, because .NET. I mean that you can, you can well, use. Well, what they said part of the problem is this doesn't get rid of the APIs, and yeah. this is the really bad thing that's going on with the court case. Yeah, I don't know if you want to talk about well with that. with uh, the API structures is that APIs may be uh, set as copyright copyrightable. Yeah. Now, what somebody else said is is Java is pretty much based off C. Yeah, a lot of the structure and stuff like that. So theoretically, C is also copyrightable. So theoretically, APIs. you can't actually have any languages. And that's, it, oh. that's what Google is arguing in this case, is that the APIs are part of the language. Mm. So you can't copyright a language or, or you, know, you can't copyright the elements that you need to be able to express things in that language. Yeah. That's just, it's ridiculous coming from any standpoint. And that's the kind of angle that Google is taking on this. Anyway, Zobot OS, .NET awesome. powered Android. Well, it's a good Git depository, so if anybody wants to get into it. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. It's, I mean, it's, 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 it. it's a really cool research um, project. It would be great to see it go further and, uh, and, say, and just to see yeah. what they can actually do with it, see what kind of op- what, what more optimizations, because they can already pull a, a whole bunch of things in there, and, you know, what more can they actually yeah. do with this? And I know certain things actually do work quicker. Though yeah. what one friend is quite involved in is it, it might work quicker, but the thing with the Davlik, Davlik is that it's quite optimized for memory. And there's... Mm. Might not have the same optimizations. Yes, so. might, but I mean, with the amount, with the gig gig of RAM that we have in there right now, and you know, the more that we're going, yeah. is that really that necessary? Anyway, cool. That's just interesting. I like the thing. Um, in some other more amusing news, Skype, who we all know has been bought by Microsoft, um, in that they've got something called Supernodes. You know, it's a whole peer to peer system. Yes. And you have super nodes. Now, the super nodes are not actually used for relaying messages or voice. Mm. So you don't worry there's somebody intercepting you. Yes, yes. It's more that it's, it's done so you can find where people Other are. Other peers. So when you log on, you find a super node. You say, my name, I'm online. Tim, here's my IP. Mm-hmm. And when the other people go, they also put that in. And that's and after that, you will then connect directly to your friend. So the connections when you're phoning and you're talking actually one-to-one direct, but you still use the super nodes for finding each other. Yes. It's very similar to torrents, mm-hmm. if you want to call it that. But before this, this was actually done via users. Yes. Uh, so you'd get strong strong users would act as super nodes. Yeah. Uh, now, basically, Microsoft gone. They had problems with this, and they've gone and hosted a whole bunch of the themselves, and they've gone, they've cut it down. So I think they've gone from they like went from something like 40,000 40, super nodes that they had, but user super nodes to a thousand, ten thousand. Yeah. No, it's far greater increase than that. Um, and I think before you could do. It's 48,000 clients. Yeah. They have now gone down to 10,000 super nodes. 10,000 super nodes. And they're all hosted now these by the are company. Hosted by them. And <coughs> the funny part comes in is that these are Linux boxes with some <laughs> added security packages to, uh, you know, just help out. Well, yeah, because you can sense. secure Windows like that. <laughs> Sorry. 
Yeah. You yeah. see how we all go quiet. We just start <laughs> arguing. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a valid point. What? I mean, there it is. Uh, but it is Microsoft is uh, a fairly heavy contributor to uh, Linux. I, know, I, know, I, I think they're the, one of the second largest. One of the top ones. After Red Hat, I think they're this, one of the second largest contributors. Who did it? Red <laughs> Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I didn't hear you. Must be my ears. <laughs> no, Red Hat is actually uh, still going very strong. They're one of the – everybody mocks Red Hat because they, they charge for things, and it's, you know, it's quite expensive to get it. But you, they're one well, of the they biggest – for the support. Su- one of the biggest mm. supporters of Linux out there, and they actually do a hell of a lot of good work for, for Linux. Yeah. Um, compared to like Ubuntu or anything like that. So when's the last time you've installed a Red Hat server? Ages. And, and it's or, bad. Or Fedora. Well, me install one, no, but uh, about two years ago, I know there was one or Fedora. For the company. That I did one last with. year. It's standing in our server room. You just don't know about it. But, uh, awesome. yeah, but in a way, that's actually <laughs> quite upsetting because, as I said, I know how much they're contributing. And if yeah. people stop using them, Ubuntu's not putting that much effort back into the community. Yeah. Now, I love Ubuntu. I use it, so I'm not bashing them. I think what they've done has been great, and they've actually taken Linux finally far more mainstream than any of the others that have done it quite well. Mm. Um, but in that, we, we're going to lose a lot of dev work and assets into the Linux community, and, and, and that is a bit of a worry for me. Okay, just for the record, Microsoft is using GR Security. Yeah. Yes. Well, uh, on that so note, there, there was another story today. There was a Skype exploit that reveals your IP address. Yes. Yeah. Whoopsie. <laughs> um, and it's via the dev Skype where you can write your own clients and stuff like that. Okay, but what does it matter? Most of us are sitting behind NatWin Network, so you can get my private yeah. IP. Uh, <laughs> Go for it. Unplug router, plug back in. Not so much your private, they will get your external IP that you, where you're coming from. And now, now, the reason for this is a lot of people use uh, Skype to actually, uh, because it's quite secure, and it's encrypted and all the rest of it. So that's one of the things is it upsets governments quite badly. But a lot of guys in like China and stuff, when they want to talk, they use Skype because A, it's encrypted. And it's also then quite, because it's direct to direct, mm. it's very hard to detect. Mm. And um, even if you do, there aren't any logs. So they can't go and subpoena a third party company for the logs from whatever that for was. For the communication yeah. between the two clients. Yes. Okay, yeah. all right. So now uh, they can go watch the super nodes and find out who you're talking to. Okay. So uh, it's just something to be aware of. Uh, it is quite reasons why. Make yourself a target, and but you will be a target. Again, that, that's, that's, that's all they can get. They can only the get who? The whole argument of, you know, if you have nothing to hide, why are you hiding it? It's not because I have anything to hide. I know there are people who do, and there are t- sometimes reasons where you want to hide it. So I'm quite a pro person that you, you should have the right and means to hide yourself if you really want to. Okay, well, then don't use Skype. I mean, stay, off, <laughs> stay off the internet. I mean, I mean the day that yeah. Microsoft bought it, that should have been a signal, smoking signal going up. Don't use Skype. I mean, True. <laughs> what alternative is there? For direct to peer to peer, a good old phone call. <laughs> no, well, I don't know how to use no. those things. <laughs> you know, do you know how easy that's tracked and how <laughs> much that's tracked and your voices are pattern recognized for specific words. And this is done worldwide, including our country. A good old handshake. Yeah. How's that? Yeah. There we go. And you have to have flown and they've watched you. Yeah, yeah, okay, all right. No, you use something like the dark nets or something like that. Uh, free nets, one of them. Use the tall projects mm-hmm. or something like that. <laughs> use Yahoo. <laughs> yeah, Nobody's no, watching no one them. watches <laughs> Yahoo. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. That was bad. Anyway. Um, Do we want to talk about Windows 7 and Xbox and uh, Germany? Say, it's yeah. been banned in Germany. Yeah. Okay, uh, no, you article. can't just okay, say that. Mot- Why? Mot- Motorola has won an injunction against Microsoft for Windows 7 and the Xbox 360 because of uh, specific H.264 patents. Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as I understand it, this is an injunction that they can't necessarily enforce. So it's there. Microsoft isn't happy okay, about it. I'm sure they're going to be... What does it mean to Germany? I mean, if you've know, got a Windows 7 box, what you've got to now return it? No. Was Thing, it future are, sales. Yes, future yeah. sales. So uh-huh. if if you can enforce it, then it means the the um, person has to take all their products off the market. So they have to pull it from the shelves. Mm. That's pretty expensive, mm. and then they can't sell it until that injunction is lifted. Having uh, said so this, also, which that, which could have been more catastrophic, is a lot of the Microsoft uh, products for the rest of Europe, of Europe might are go shi- through are Germany. Shifted used to be shipped from mm. Germany. Yes, and in which case so they may prob- not ship to the rest of Europe bad. from there. Now, Microsoft, seeing that this might have happened, has actually been moving all their the stuff out yes. of Germany. Okay. Um, so th- that won't cause a problem for the rest of Europe. Having said that, Germany is one of the largest um, producers 
and has some of the, mo- the most money currently in Europe compared mm-hmm. to Greece or whatever. Yeah. Um, so that actually is quite a bad place not to be able to sell your, your product. Yeah. Okay. Right. I'm sure so. they'll sort it all out. In yeah, the end they will. Yeah. Uh, no. Having said that, we were looking be appealing at this, what I'm sure. Motorola was asking for, and we, we all said, like, yeah, it's, it's actually 2.25% 2. mm-hmm. of any product. Of, of the product, yeah, which would mean $22.5 on a $1,000 laptop. Just for one small component. Yes. Yeah. For, well, for uh, a patent or uh, maybe a few patents. Well, then what um, I like? Specifically to do with video. Like with every, video everybody does. I mean, like, for half of the Android devices don't ship with Flash. Because they don't want to pay the flash license, just install it afterwards. Yeah, mm. here's an update. But in any case, they'll they'll sort it out. Yeah, look, I just want all these patent things to stop. I, I want patents to be revised. It's not going to happen. That. But that's what I want. Yes. Um, Back into you, gaming. N- yes. <laughs> yeah. And my. Diablo 3. <laughs> yeah, well, what is this Diablo 3? Have you not spoken yeah, you about it in the last it, couple of weeks? It's a little hack and slash RPG coming out on 15th of May. So, uh, what? Hack and little, slash. little hack and slash ARPG. It's a little one. Yeah, yeah small. By no, the small company. Uh, nothing big. It's also Torchlight 2, so it's just totally. Uh, yeah, they really missed their window of opportunity there. It, uh, I find it very Is Torchlight 2 coming what? out now? I don't think yes. they even dated it, have June. they? June. Oh, they gave it a release date. June, July, and it's going to have multiplayer. Yes. It's like, cool, yes. finally. Ooh, it's a bit yeah. late. Yeah, it's, yeah, and it's bit like, late. They had their chance. If and Diablo is just... You, you, if at that point, they released the multiplayer with the first one. They mm. could have been a competitor. Mm. Yeah. Uh, now no, they even had a good window of opportunity, but they were messing around porting Torchlight 1 to Xbox. When they could have just released Torchlight 2, capitalized on you know this resurgence of action RPG. Uh, Torchlight 1 was... Good fun. It was a good game. No, it was awesome. Torchlight it 2 was will undoubtedly be a good game. Mm. And but it's going to be overshadowed be by cool. Unfortunately, Diablo 3 has been 10 years in the making or whatever. And 12. Yeah, something like that. And all the Diablo There's fanboys the article, not this nice article on, the, on this website called My Gaming. It's here to Z. I don't know if you've heard about it. I don't know if you've heard about it. Uh, he specifically says graphics rendering has improved since 2000. So I'm going to assume that... Diablo Look, 2 was 2000. We, we, a lot of us have played the demo. Mm-hmm. It's uh, I, I'm going to be honest. I haven't. It's good. But this interface looks exactly what you've got in World of Warcraft. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I'm, it's I'm sure they took a lot of inspiration yeah. from they their look, other games. Yep, yeah. Yeah. It looks the same. Yeah. Look, it's going to be very yeah. similar. Yeah, I've, I've seen some people's World of Warcraft interfaces. That thing looked pretty cluttered. This one is nice and clean. Well, I mean, World of Warcraft, you can customize. Yeah, this yeah, is exactly. the standard you, you can Diablo. S- this is nice and clean. No, that's relatively. World of Warcraft. <laughs> but it's all right. I'll, I'll 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 give it a bash. Hopefully, there's going to be a demo. Like there Blizzard probably will does. be. Um, yeah, it would be yeah. nice to see them do something like um, what do they call it? Like it used to be the spawn copy that you could could do, where like somebody uh, could play like l- the first campaign yeah. with you or yeah, yeah. something like first that. First couple uh, of missions. Look, I'm sure the demo mm. that you currently can play. You must sure be able to do that. That first. Well, that's the beta. That's the beta. It's not beta, but it's not. It's not public. Yeah, it's not public. So maybe the beta becomes. Actually, they. If you apply for it, you get it now. About middle of last year, all the Warcraft or Blizzard moved over to a. A spawning release, so you could actually download the client, mm-hmm. and as you play, it, the, the content's downloading in the background. Mm-hmm. So I'm very sure they're going to use the same engine on a product like this. I mean, mm-hmm. so you'll end up downloading probably 80 meg installation. You can start playing, and as you're playing, It'll the rest of the content. Yeah. content. Oh no, this one definitely does it. I saw in the beta this bit where it says "still downloading." You can now play. It, it will now look good. And do you want the extra, extra stuff to make it really it's very look clever? Good? Huh? Very yeah, stunning. Cool. So, so again, the box is not going to mean anything. I'm not getting a box. I've already paid for mine. Collector's edition on the way. I didn't do that. Mm. So you're going to your launch party? No. Oh, okay. They're in Cape Town. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. 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 Cape Speak Town. to your boss. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my gaming launch party. <laughs> yeah. But we've got to go with. Okay. But yeah, you got, um, you were, we were actually talking about this article. What can you expect? Yeah, it was just uh, Chris, uh, one of our writers, uh, he's a you know, big Diablo fan. He took a look at uh, what Diablo 2 players, who are you know, obviously veterans and they've had this game for 10 years that they've played to death, can expect from the game. So uh, he gave it the thumbs up. I mean, I don't want to go into all the details here. If you want to go check what he had to say, it's on our website. Uh, he gave it the thumbs up from his uh, veteran player status perspective. So yeah, we're all pretty excited. 15th of May can't come soon enough. 
Is that a Tuesday or Wednesday? It's a Tuesday, unfortunately. So no, that's we, we a Tuesday is the blizzard. They release mm. it on sorry twelve o'clock Monday night. Or Tuesday is normally the uh, rolling restarts the days for server, uh, blizzard servers. <laughs> Good timing, yeah. So you'll that, probably well, start I mean, playing Starcraft, until five a.m. When Starcraft launched, there was a bit of a hiccup <clears> in some parts of the world. I remember people can get on. You can imagine the whole damn world is trying to log into your game so yeah I, I waited until the day after before yeah, I went sure. and bought a copy <laughs> and it's maybe the, the better way to get the box uh, to get to get the boxes out there because then you know how many you can mm, need to do exactly having said that what mm-hmm. is different now is you can pre-download the client so there are a lot mm. of guys pre-downloading the client so you're not going to have everybody sunny logging on the night or pulling in the updates all these guys have pre-downloaded clients can be really start logging in yeah. So you can actually structure so the it local, a lot, lot even, better. Even so the if you do, the things, that you're, the things that you're downloading, you're not downloading from a central server. It's yeah, yeah, peer-to-peer. Peer 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 yeah, peer. cool. So also all those guys that are up, because I'm every, every now and again I turn one on get the latest thing. So at that point, I'm going to just obviously be seeding. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so all this that leave it on overnight. Oh, well. They uh, did some stress testing. I think it was last weekend. So they mm-hmm. opened up the beta to everyone. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. hopefully they're ready. And that cool. seemed to go okay. BlackBerry 10. <laughs> BlackBerry is currently having an event uh, in the good old US of A, and they showed us BlackBerry uh, OS 10. Oh, is that what the 10 is for? Yes. Uh, oh, they, was, they wanted to go with something like BBX, or? but I think they got told that they weren't allowed to use that, some other copyright thing. <laughs> so they went with OS 10. And uh, I've, I've taken a little bit of a look at it, at some of the parts and, you know, some of the, the video footage and the screenshots, and, you know, and it actually looks really cool. They've, uh, but that looks like I- iOS. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at the demos I've seen, it looks like a slight mixture between Android, Android and, and yeah. iPhone. And okay, they've, so, they've okay, also question. taken no, they've they've taken some more elements uh, from WebOS as well, which arguably is still one of the best looking mobile phone OSs uh, available. Okay, question: Status bar, slide from the top or the bottom. <laughs> no status bar, as far as I no, know. But I can see the icons from from Android at the top left there, so it's going to slide down as well. Bet you. Uh, no, actually sides from the side. Okay, so I see my so mail. They're running out of directions. Slide. The next guy who invents an OS has to do it diagonally. Yeah, it's going to so. have to like turn on the phone. You know, you know with it, the, it'll be a cube <laughs> yeah, and you're, you're rotating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can, can, you, can you all recall when iOS decided, no, you can slide it down? Everybody went, yo, you got that from Android. Yeah, obviously. Wait, yeah. Except Android's implementation is still well. there. So you see the, the mail and you turn your phone. And then it shows you. Ah, so there there's your status is on the back. There we go. Yeah. And Look that's at the what we're going to have with those translucent phones. Yeah, sure. And, and then it so needs the to detect which way you're turning and turn the back screen off. Save power. Score. How cool would that. that would, I would want that phone. More I already want failure. that. Okay. Yeah. But in any case. So they've, they're, they're giving the UI a complete overall. This is also based on QNX. Um, which is what the Playbook OS is based on. So it's a lot more like the Playbook, a lot more uh, gestural, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and hopefully they can actually make this one work. Look, I hope, because I hope this, so. yeah, this, it needs apps. It Just needs give it apps. apps. It needs developer cool. support. Yeah. And they've been showing off some of that as well. They have some, some decent developer support. Uh, I've tried porting one of my Android apps to Playbook, and just from that experience, it is absolutely terrible. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. So I'm hoping, easy. yes, they need to make it easy for developers to either port their, to, to port their apps and to write new apps, native apps. Yeah. Also, apparently, they've got a thing where them. if if you port your app and you, you look, you've got to be put a certain amount of money into development, mm. and it doesn't work, they will pay you up to ten thousand dollars back if it doesn't sell. I, but you've got to, I, think, I think it's pretty much you've got to prove that you spent more than ten thousand mm. dollars on it. Yeah, um, but but that's what they need. It's, it's adding security to get more developers in. Mm. Well, and here's like you said, you had a porting experience and it wasn't good. I, yeah, I had a terrible experience with yeah. a playbook. Um, but you got there, a playbook out of it? I did get a playbook out of it, and that's now sitting where, in a drawer. Yeah, where's the playbook? Yeah. In a drawer. Yeah. I'm, I'm not using it at all. No, nah, I'm sorry. I my I'm not, I'm not knocking right over here. But Look, I want, to th- I want them to make this work because I want, I want another decent competitor. Yes. Windows Phone has not lived up to the promise, so we're still stuck with two competitors in the mobile space. Mm. We, we need a third. We need a third. Yeah. And the desktop space. Yes. Well, we, we have, we have, we, we have Windows, we have Mac OS, and, we, and have Linux. we have Ubuntu, which has, I mean, what, 25, 30 million users around there. And many. how many of those are servers? I don't know if those are just desktop well, look, installs. Uh, I'm telling you now, as soon as they get gaming working, which with Steam mm. they're going to get, as yeah. soon as they get, the only reason I saw the Windows... 
Uh, P- PC is to play games. Play games. And strange enough, edit video. We have a video editor. Coming. There is a video yeah, editor on its way as well. But to edit video right now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, I'm okay. with you on that one. I'd switch to some sort of Linux OS. I've as yeah. soon as I can play games on it. I'll At home, this. I've already switched to Ubuntu as my daily driver, and 12.04 is smooth. Lovely. It is very nice, fantastic. I don't know if you've checked the the desktop, uh, the multi screens. They've done some work there. It seems to be a whole load better. Somewhere in my putting um, XFCE, I've killed my Oops. Ubuntu Unity, <laughs> <laughs> which I don't care because Unity sucked in uh, really, really. Uh, it's it, it drove me nuts. And when I went back to XFCE, it was like, peace, calm. Peace. I, yeah. I work. I had another friend also at work who also was like going, I said, like, just try it, try it. It was like, no, it's, it, it won't be better. Trying it's like, he's like, yes. I see what you mean. <laughs> Um, so I'm back on XFCE. Mm. Uh, to, to okay, but you're saying that gaming might just change it. Definitely, gaming would. Yes, I think there well, are more I, than a, more than a few people who would. So this whole step for Steam is maybe a good one. Yes, yes. Steam. Uh, they, there were some comments from Steam that they not uh, at all, you know, not sure with Windows 8 with the Windows 8 release, um, how successful that's going to be, and whether you know staying with Windows is is that greater. You know, just just staying with Windows and not porting to Linux would be a great idea. So. Port, Look, I've, port to I, Linux and uh, I've always believed Steam. that if you get uh, yeah, the absolutely. major manufacturers like the Dells and the um, sorry the Dells and the HPs to start shipping PCs because that's what's going to happen with Windows 8 no matter how crap it is you're going to buy gonna a new because that's you're going to buy want. a new machine and you, it's going to have it on there you mean yep. how that worked for Vista exactly yeah. that's how Vista that's sold it's because they shipped yeah, with and, new PCs and, why Vista and people died. downgraded to XP yeah. <laughs> well <So> upgraded <laughs> maybe if one of these major manufacturers can get a platform that pleases people where it switches on and it works like it should and they start shipping it as a desktop platform well, look the other is. thing is they're also saying Steam's want to at some point and they're looking in doing a, a spec hardware for games mm. um, and they're now starting to think that with the PC that you're buying they'll, they'll spec it so somebody else can also build them for them mm. running specifically and all it will pretty much run is Steam and they said the most likely back end for that is going to be Linux, and that's what they're looking at. Mm. And this is a good first step in that direction. Mm. Mm. Okay. And they can start testing all the games in it. Um, and eventually, you, look, you'll run your own version of Linux it updates and all this shit. So you, it will be invisible like it is on the Android. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's going in that direction. But then, from a gaming perspective, yeah. when is Apple going to step into this market? Uh, well, I do you mean, mean you Steam on Mac? No, no. I mean, console. Uh, well, never. Sh- who knows? Ugh. Never say never with Apple. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's. I guess do we, it's do we need? Do we need another console? Uh, no, you know, console, they, console. We yeah. have Xbox, we have PlayStation, we have Nintendo. Yeah, Nintendo. We uh, yeah, that covers pretty much all the bases. I don't no, know. Maybe, I mean, maybe a fourth competitor would do something. Just would, think about it. I mean, everything they've done, I hate them or not. They're doing their good sales good. If they now mm. release a, a console, you're going to have all those fanboys buying yeah, the console. They want their regardless console. if it works or not. I mean, it'll just play all the same games as uh, the other consoles to mm. the same effect. If Maybe. You get it right. Yeah, but if, yeah. also if they like get Xbox developers to port. Years and like years to, to get enough traction. Xbox One. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, that was their first entry. And, and the they put lots and lots yeah. of money into it. Can you see Apple doing that, having it fail that badly? Yeah, you know, I mean, that would be a big that. risk for them. I mean, why would they when they're doing so well everywhere else? You know, with uh, Apple unless they just because they've got the fanboys. They can, yeah. Well, it would yeah. be cool. I, I mean, I'd welcome it. Just they released a, so a tablet and it's gone yeah. gold, yeah. platinum. Yeah, but it, it was good. It worked. Again, it was good. It they worked. They could make a console that works. They could make a console it that works. It was necessary. And people will buy it just because it's got the bloody Apple on it. The, it mm. Mm. In any case. I, I disagree. No, no, it, it, it was the, that. The, the tablet market, I mean, there were tablets before it. We all know this. Yeah. But it needed a proper good redesign no, for it to no be able to accept it. tablets that worked button. and were sitting. Exactly. Yes. But they were there. They just they sucked. Were there. Just like there were mm-hmm. smartphone operating systems, but they sucked. Yes. So what they've done, they've come into industries where it's not working that well. And they've taken They've done that since the iPod. But, yeah, and I think um, what's the, the TVs and the, the Mac streaming stuff, you know? Mm. How well mm-hmm. are those doing? Mm. Are people buying them off, off the shelves? I don't hear much about it, hey? yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's fair. Okay. The, 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 following your argument, they should be. It's look, it's got the Apple logo. No, they sold. They uh, sold a lot yeah. of stuff, but they didn't have the content. They couldn't secure the content. And they didn't sell that well. Exactly. Well, with console, it's the same thing. You have to secure the content. But in any case, all right. Yeah. Just an interesting a thought. Yeah. thought. Max Payne. Yeah, the other 
big release hey. in May. Um, I mean, it's been a yeah. pretty dry month, but uh, yeah, Max Payne 3, looking good. Uh, they revealed the DLC rollout plan. Of course, you can't get away with the AAA title these days without having a DLC rollout plan. So you can expect... Sorry, what is a DLC rollout plan? They, they have uh, revealed that there will be, I think, seven uh, expansion packs of various kinds mm-hmm. uh, for the rest of the year. And uh, of course... Okay, so you buy the core game and then you'll get uh, expansions. Yeah, more maps, go. more weapons, more other things. Is this DLC free or do you have oh, to pay? Oh, absolutely not. You yeah. pay for it and if for you're... each one. The wise consumer will purchase the Rockstar Pass, which gets you all of the DLC at a discounted rate. What does discounted mean? About 30% off, I think. Off, from, okay. So buying it, it individually. Yeah. Uh, Have they named any kind of pricing for this? Uh, yeah, I think they did. I can bring okay, up the cool. article here. Right. I think you guys so can have I'm a look at it. Just going to mm. move, move us on a bit. Okay, excellent. Yeah, we segued cool. a bit. All right, yeah. <laughs> um, some awesome things uh, we're getting to our kickers. Portal turrets uh, puts, puts Beyonce, Beyonce to shame. shame. <laughs> and basically, uh, I, I think it's the Beyonce, uh, uh, if I were a man or something. Don't look at me. Something yeah, no, like I researched that. this, and it, Beyonce, if I were a boy, I think. It's not, yeah, you know, so not, that sounds... The, the Portal version's better. Cool. Uh, just Way better, if I was there. a mainframe. Uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> uh, very it's cool. Good for if a giggle, I yeah. were a core. If I was a core. A personality core, if you played... Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just going <laughs> mainframe. <laughs> I mean, right at the, 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 the title of the video says, if I were a core. Sorry, I so was what is it? At the portal character singing the song, a, a play on the song. Oh, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. it's awesome. It's very good. It's well worth going to go watch, to, to watch. That's yeah, it's a nice one. Very cool. Good for a giggle. Are you um, still there? <clears throat> and then Johan, I just you going to introduce Charlene. Charlene. This is a ridiculous a video. Sexy, <laughs> sexy Charlene. I'm not going to speak like that. <laughs> and it's not a core. This is just a video I stumbled upon on Google+. Plus. Somebody posted it up. This is this mad Russian guy that shows some new weaponry. And they've taken... Fake a Russian. Okay, what? Fake <laughs> Russian. Fake mad Russian, Russian real weaponry? Yes. Doesn't matter. Yes. Yes. And, and he's got and a... And he blows stuff a, up. They've got a quattro cop. Uh, uh, Quad copter. There yeah, we go. A giant machine gun. And they've thing. installed a hundred round machine gun on the bottom of this thing. Okay. And it flies it around with a tablet. And here's Shut the up end. and take my money. With oh. a camera... Skynet. <laughs> We're doomed. Off you go. I mean, it's just <laughs> and, crazy. And you your machine gun because as it's firing, you, you can, can see it move, <laughs> kicking the, the moving thing back. back. So cool. either it's very well shot if it's a fake mm. or it's like really this guy's just shooting this thing. I, I think it is shooting some real stuff though. Even now you see them decimating stuff, uh, there's some fake explosions going on. I oh, know, in, awesome in the dummies, he's got some obviously additional explosions and stuff, yeah, so it looks but better. But look at the copter, and it looks like it's really working. Only thing that's really making me feel like this is all a setup is when he s- takes off with this copter, if I'm standing with those controls and this thing has got a 100 round machine gun in it, I'm not turning that thing over me to get to the target. And he does yeah. it twice in the video, which I'm going like, not a chance, boy. <laughs> not a chance in hell. I, I will have it turn it the other way to get to the target, not over mm-hmm. me. That's the only thing that I'm looking yeah. at going, yeah, maybe this is fake, Look, but brilliant cool video. video. Go cool check video. It well done. So with it. And check out the rest of his videos. He has yeah. a whole channel full of, you know, crazy stuff. Crazy stuff that he does with really big guns. Okay. And blows stuff up. It's really awesome to cool. watch. James. Yes. Where can people find you? Uh, they can find me personally on Twitter, James underscore E underscore S, uh, at, obviously, in the front there. Cool. Uh, if you want to follow all the gaming news, at MyGaming, simple enough. And, of course, MyGaming.co.za, we're there every day if you want to come and awesome. check us out and we'll interact with you even on the forum. Very cool. Thank- and thanks for having me. Yep, thank here. you. Carrot. Yeah, um, about dot me slash hockey ZA, you'll be able to get to all my accounts, Google+, Plus, Twitter, uh, various others which I may have linked there that's the easiest way oh, find me on the show otherwise I am hanging around on Google Plus Johan Els um, my blog blog.hu-els.co.za and I have launched some new sites if you want to have a poke around there's some two new websites I've most lo- lo- um, that I've launched oh, about? Uh, the one is for Louis van Rensburg um, he's actually this is the guy doing <coughs> the video that I did the video for yes that I quickly did the recording and on his last shows everybody goes who the hell is he um uh, Seven Alon, he does all the music mm, okay. till today. Um, Arinder, uh, Ballada for Inkling. Wow. So he's actually a very well known South African. Everybody knows his music, but nobody knows him. So he's relaunching his career. He's come out of retirement and he's uh, embraced the social network. So I'm helping with that. And then for my dad, who's writing books, so I'm also oh, okay, redoing yeah. his, his website. So just but, yeah, Google around, you'll find me. 
Cool. Uh, and myself, and where can Tim they Hall. find you? Uh, best to find all the links to me is off the wiki. And generally, all our guests and hosts have links to themselves on the wiki with all their details. So if you didn't catch the, them being said quickly, you can go there. So that's wiki.altinet.tv or wiki.letstalknetwork.tv. And just click hosts or, or guests there on the right. Mm. Also, want to say thank you to Mixer. Thank you, Mixer. Thank you, Mixer. Cool. Otherwise, you know, catch our other shows. I know Possibility was on earlier this week. Or and they're on next week as well. Every Monday night. Like us on Facebook. Uh, Give us a plus one friend on Google us on Plus. Twitter. Friend us. I know. I had it the wrong round. Yeah. <laughs> cool. And we'll check you guys next week. Thanks for Thanks watching. Thanks for watching.